Stephen J. Westman, Curious Townie for Local IQ Magazine. Yes. We were saying, Aaron and I have driven by Fort Sumner, never really been to Fort Sumner. Right. You know, it's so. Um, why do we want to go there? I'll 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 I'll, I'll explain why. And yeah. There's. What I, what I was thinking about over the weekend as I was preparing for this, I'm not really a historian. I am a storyteller. I grew up in this state, and I think those of us with deep root history, we, you know, we're drawn to certain things. And there is, I always talk about the butterfly effect. My grandfather, Chisel Smith, was, his company's built so many of the state highways and many of the bridges around the state. So connecting the city to the town, to the village, to the county, and so I think it's always been in my blood to travel those routes and check out what's going on. A few months back here on the show, I met Jessica Eves Matthews. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Sitting at that table and hadn't really coordinated in my head the last name or that she looked exactly like her cousin who's a friend of mine, Christy Eves. But there was an aha moment that you saw. Yeah. Um, I wrote about her in my townie column this week. Um, she discussed how the legacy of her grandfather, J.W. Eves from the, from the Eves Ranch, uh -huh. is kind of in her blood. And so it kind of, as I'm, as I'm talking about Fort Sumner and these other places that I go to, there's usually a reason why I've ended up there. And part of the reason why I ended up there is the Wertheim family. Um, oh, sure. You know, the, you, know, you know, Helen Wertheim is a very good friend of mine who's yes. a local girl here. Um, I know Helen. We lost her father, Bob, this yes. year, um, which still hurts my heart. Um, yes. But their, her Uncle Bill is still part of the Fort Sumner scene where so many of the Wertheims came from with the Wertheim Cattle Ranch. Oh. And I became interested with the Bosque Redondo Memorial down there, which is a really sad part of New Mexico history. And so I wanted to go and visit it, and I spoke to Helen ahead of time, and she gave me some insight on what other things in, in Fort Sumner I should check out, which is what I did. And, nice. Uh, so I want to talk about the Bosque Redondo Memorial. Um, okay. You know, they're known for Billy the Kid down there. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think many of us have a bad taste because a certain governor wanted to pardon him at one point. But... Um, <laughs> uh, you know, it, there's a re I think, you know, the legend of Billy the Kid draws a lot of people down to Fort Sumner. It is a town, southern part of New Mexico, easy drive from here, two and a half right. hours about. So you go out I-40 to Fort um, to Santa Rosa. Right. And then you head south. And so if you're going to Clovis or if you're going to Portales, you pass right through Fort Sumner. Um, Here's the welcome sign. It's the... a kooky sign when yeah. you pull into the town, which I kind of love. Um, you know, and of course, you know, I love my old historic signs, which is the next sign up there that's going to come up. But you pull into downtown and you get that old, and it's really not bucolic feel, but old town Americana that's kind of been put on the wayside because the train doesn't stop there anymore. They've got a great old train depot right downtown. Yeah. But you've got the old buildings. Helen told me I had to go into the C Deba or into the Debaca County Courthouse. Because you're familiar with the old WPA murals that are probably sure. around the state. Yeah. Right. Um, and we'll show, there it is right there. In the courthouse, um, like in many of the post offices around town, you can go in and um, this is probably the biggest mural of any of the places in Looks New Mexico huge. that I've visited. It takes up both walls. It kind of tells the history. It's like a folk art diorama, one-dimension diorama on both sides of the walls. Mm. Um, and it gives you the feel, and as you drive downtown, you see, like, the old opera house that's no longer there. You know, the, mm -hmm. kind of the remnants of it and stuff like that. Um, I Part of staying down there is there's not a lot of... There's not a lot of, lot of lodging choices. Oh, so you spent the night there. I did spend the night there. You know, it is a day trip, but I, you know, I... I kind of want to take everything in, so I did an overnighter. Uh -huh. I ended up at a place called uh, the Billy the Kid Country Inn, and I had spoken to the woman before I got there, mm -hmm. and she said, do not expect bells and whistles, no frills, and it is what I got. <laughs> but it was a clean, lovely room, and she couldn't have been any nicer. I called to check in on her. Over the, I called a few of these people that I'd written about uh -huh. just to check in and see how they were doing, and she said, she said something, she's like, this town has a lot of heart, and new restaurants are opening up, and uh, there's a new gallery called the Six Shooter Gallery that's opened up. Hmm. But the town's got two of those Billy the Kid museums that you can check. Um, okay. 
And you go visit the gravesite too. You right? can go yeah. visit the gravesite. You know, and it's it's got a fence around it. Um, and oddly enough, it's right next door to the Bosque Redondo Memorial. Um, and I don't know, are you too familiar with why we have that down No, there? I'm not, so I want you to tell that story. So this is kind of why I'm not a historian, but yeah. um, the 1860s, um, the government had decided that we needed to set up a, a reservation to acclimate the Navajos and the Mescaleros into one community, teach them the American way of farming and stuff like that. And it was, it didn't go well. Um, it was more of an internment camp. Um, um, you know, there were, there's, there's a lot of making up that we had to do for a while. So we had to force them to did. learn the farming. We okay. did, and you know, force them to get there. Um, okay. Um, what you do, and I'm not gonna go into the politics of what happened there. Sure. But in 1991, um, the state landmark and the state museum folks decided it was time to build something because what's interesting with all the flooding that we're having right now, yeah. that Fort Sumner, uh, the Pecos River that runs through Fort Sumner has flooded that town over and over and over again. And any of the remnants of Fort Sumner are completely gone. Itself, the Itself. fort. Itself. Yeah. Um, there, there were hundreds of cottonwood trees that had been planted at that time that are kind of gone. Um, but what they built is um, an, an, a Navajo architect well, with the last name of Sloan built this building and part of it looks like a Navajo Hogan and the other part looks like... Have we put it on right the there. screen yet? Yeah. Let's yes. put it up. Um, there it is. Navajo Hogan and an Apache teepee. Um, hmm. Honestly, when you walk onto the property, you get this sense of, I'm walking through something special that means a lot to a lot of people. Yeah. And you go inside and they've got an education <coughs> center where you can watch a video about what happened. Um, they're really active with students. Um, and, I'll, and a little bit later I'll talk about teachers and, and, the, and the memorial. But from there you take a self-guided tour with one of those speaker things. Oh, and yeah. Wes Studi, the, uh, the actor from New Mexico, uh -huh. he narrates it and so you're walking up, you punch it and you visualize what was where you were at that moment. Oh, you take wow. a walk down by the river. Um, you can't leave that place without being changed a little bit. Hmm. Um, it's, I think it's, an, you know, I like the history museums. I like the memorials in our state. Sure. You learn a little bit more. Um, and it makes you appreciate what we've done and what we've learned from. Yes. Um, I drove home right after seeing that. I had spent the night and I drove home right after that. And that 30 minute drive, the clouds were coming in and I thought about the Navajos who had walked yeah. there and you know, it gets to you. Um, so it's, it's, it's definitely worth seeing. Teachers that I spoke to afterwards said that they wish they had funding to take their kids down there. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's a really good education for them. Well, Steve, we have about two minutes left. Oh no! Well, we can we can hold you over a little. Bit. Okay, we'll hold over because then yeah. I'll I'll talk about the other really fun stuff to do there. Yeah, well, because we'll, there's good. Just we'll stop a little time. Finish your thoughts on this. Uh, uh, my thoughts on that are: we there are reasons that we build these monuments, and there the the Vietnam Memorial right in Angel up Fire. in Angel Fire yeah. is that's a very moving. It's thing. a totally moving thing, and you know yeah. we do it because we have to honor people that have lost their lives for us. Um, and I, uh, uh, I could get a little emotional talking about it, but it's, it's a good reason to go down there. And that walking along the river and you take everything in and you think about where we got to at this point, and yeah. we're fortunate. So, now, is this a state um, memorial? It is, and um, so it is, it is primarily run by both by, by, by the Mescalero and the Navajos. Okay. But it I is state-funded. Um, I see. And they do all kinds of different workshops throughout the year. They have a really beautiful um, uh, uh, gift shop in there. I've been about three or four times over the last couple of years, and each time I go in, I learn something a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I think it's worth a two and a half hour trip to go out there. And just to see this. Just to see that. It's an easy overnight, I mean, it's an easy day trip. Yeah. People can easily do it in a day. Um, 
You know, like I said, there's really some cool places downtown on the main strip. You've got to go into that courthouse that I mentioned. Um, but uh, there's a place called Dairyland, which is one of those, it's the only drive through in town. Dairyland. So you've got, you know, and it's, the, it's one of those older places, you know, they make great milkshakes. Mm -hmm. um, um, now we have a picture of a milkshake someplace. The milkshake, that's from Addison Drug. That's the oldest drugstore in town. They still have got oh. the old soda fountain. No kidding. Look so at you that. just that's go up, neat. that guy made me a Rocky Road milkshake, and you're watching the people that are still in there getting the prescriptions filled. And it's, it's you know, the drugstore is, a, sometimes in smaller towns, that's the local hub. It is. I mean, if I'd had a little ear thing, I could have heard all the gossip of what was going on in town. <laughs> But there's also a place called Fred's Restaurant, which is really I, great New Mexican food. I, I love these signs. The oh, little martini glass yeah. and the picture of the chef. You know, I asked where can I get a martini in town, and they said go to Fred's, and so Fred that's where him. I ended up. Is yeah. There, is there a guy named Fred there? Uh, there is a guy named Fred there, but right. I never met him. Um, okay. It was a guy named Will that poured my drink. That was the fine dining. Where there's a Will, there's a way to get a martini. Yeah. So, um, you found a martini in Fort Sumner. You know, and there's also out at Sumner Lake, yeah. which is this gorgeous little, you, you go about 10 minutes back on your way out of town and you go out to Sumner Lake, which I love has got to be full of water. There's a place called the Hideaway, Fisherman's Hideaway. Look and at it this is sign. A they got it all. Grocery. The, huh. They've got your dining and dancing. The you inside is completely kooky and fun. I called to check in on them over the weekend and they lost their cook. So all they're doing is their full bar and hamburgers. Nothing huh. else but hamburgers. So go and sit on the edge of the lake and have a burger and a beer. Which you know I'm all about all the time. So, <laughs> but um, you know downtown you've got the you've got the tool to um, Billy the Kid Museums, which you should always check yeah. out. So, um, how much time do we have? I get worried that I'm going to run about out. About three minutes. Got yeah, about three minutes. So we're yeah. good. Um, so uh, you've got um, what else did I want to talk about? Um, there are about there's um, they do a thing called Fort Sumner Days. And they do it once once during the year, yeah. and you go out, and they do like re it's a good time to take the kids out there. They do reenactments of the Billy the Kid thing. Oh, um, how fun! Oh boy! Um, but uh, you go when you go and look at Billy the Kid's grave, which they had to put a fence around because people would break in and uh -huh. you know vandalize it. But his grave is next to Lucy and Maxwell, the guy who owned the house where he was shot. Mm. Right. Um, well, we have a picture of that house. We do. Yeah, there's, there there's should the be a Maxwell picture of Lucian house. Maxwell's house up yeah. there somewhere. There it is. There, that's um, that's where Sheriff Pat Garrett found Billy the Kid. It is. Wow. So, and what's cool about this is that house was the officers' quarters during the Bosque Redondo Reservation days, and then it was later taken over by Land Baron Lucian Maxwell, and so he lived there, and that's actually where Billy the Kid broke into, where Pat Garrett came in, and. Speaking of family history, there's a chef in town named Jane Garrett who cooks at the Mabel Dodge Lujan house, who's a descendant of Pat Garrett, I found out while I was out there. <laughs> so, you know, there's all these little fun stories around the state about that. But part of the really cool thing about the One Billy Kid Museum next to the memorial, like record shops, they have these files of photos that you just dig through. Oh. And you can pull out and you see the different timelines of the city, which is a really great thing, too. Um, cool. There's a lot to learn there. Um, We're going to put the um, website to the Bosque Redondo Memorial. Go right see there. it. There you go. Um, and that's uh, so it's a day trip. You it's can a, go out to Fort Sumner. Do it in a day okay. or stay overnight. Um, if you stay overnight, go and see the lovely people at the Billy the Kid Country Inn. Um, but it's, it's a good day trip. Get, get some food at Dairyland and take it out to the lake. Um, so. Nice. Local IQ has a new issue, and it's about beer. Which we've got a beer fest coming up. Yeah. Um, and they're the fifth. These ladies of the brew cruise. Yes. Um, the big beer fest on October 5th, which I will be touting. And actually, in two weeks, you will probably see me in a teaser of my Lederhosen, uh -oh. uh, which I wear while I'm out there. Um, <laughs> it so, must uh, be October. I don't, I, time. That, that actually sounded bad. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, I'm, I'm not going yeah. to expose the entire outfit yet. Okay. But. Uh oh. <laughs>